Well, well, well. Trump finally did it, man. He finally really affected the markets. I mean, hey, things were great at first. You know, it was all good, Trump rally, but now tariffs coming out, you know other countries are gonna react. So let me tell you what you should do to, to position yourself for all the chaos that's coming. What's up, world? How's it going? Michael EJ here, helping you reach your financial goals and dreams by becoming the best investor you can be. If you're new to the channel, what's up? Mainly talk about building wealth through the stock market and talk about thinking differently than the market. The mantra here is, if you wanna beat the market, you gotta think differently than the market. So if you wanna think differently than the market, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with everybody, and let's get started. Now what I mean by things started off actually really well is, I don't know if everybody remember, but because Hillary Clinton was expected to win November 2016 and Trump won, it shocked everybody. It was like a little Trump rally that happened. And then what a lot of people really missed was that in the beginning of 2017, Q1, a flood of money, so much money, like you have no idea, entered the market. All the big names, everybody, everybody did well. Everybody was eating, All, just about every stock was doing well. Like you could have did the whole, threw like something through a dart and just picked a random stock and it probably did well last year. And probably will also led to the volatility. Cause I mean, I mean, a lot of people had confidence that Trump wasn't gonna ruin the status quo. He's gonna be more pro-business. And even if he didn't do anything, as long as this don't do nothing, don't do anything to harm the country. That's, that's really was the plan. Now, things are starting to get shaky. Starting to get shaky because it looks like Trump's gonna essentially declare like a tariff on all foreign um, or imported steel and other metals. And yeah, that's good for the domestic guys, but oh man, what makes the market scared is the domino effect. You know, I mean, you can't just tariff the rest of the world and expect them not to react. I mean, look at some of our biggest um, trading partners. We got China, uh, mainly China. I mean, and you got different places all across South America. I mean, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, you, you can't be out here giving tariffs. This, it doesn't work. It's been shown through economic theory that it doesn't work. It doesn't do what you think it does, which is um, help boost the production and help boost the success of your domestic partners. Having that populist protectionist mentality just doesn't work. And it's, it's finally coming to bear. I must admit, it took longer than I thought. I'm happy that it didn't happen earlier. You know, I'm happy Trump kind of just didn't really do anything. I mean, Korea was something. I know North Korea might've been something, but here's the thing. North Korea, they won't, they won't hurt us economically. We don't trade with them. They don't help us with anything. They're just two guys with, you know, overinflated egos, you know, talking through the media. Not a big deal. I mean, hey, hey the Finch stocks benefited. You got Boeing in the sorts. I mean, how can Boeing nearly double in one year? Come on, that stock is really too big. Sorry for the tangent, sorry for the tangent. Let's just, let's get back to it. So tariff wars look like it's gonna happen. Once it becomes enacted, if it does, hopefully somebody stops them. But once it becomes enacted, um, at least in the US, there's gonna be a domino effect and other countries are going to react. So what do you need to do to protect yourself and your portfolio for some upcoming volatility, some upcoming chaos coming? First off, kind of depends on if you're more on the trading side or more of an investor thinking more tactically or thinking more strategically. Tactically, for the traders, hey, this worked out. You know, you can trade those domestic names. You can trade around those metal stocks. You know, I mean, and, and one really good thing, I, I am a fan of sentiment trading. It is part of my swing investing type of thought process. It's the first part, the swing investment. You got the momentum slash high sentiment trading. So you find a stock that has a lot of sentiment with it. You usually look, we, for the 52 week highs and you start there. And then you also check sell side. There's a, if they're giving a lot of buy recommendations, buy side, there's a lot of money flooding to it, especially lately. More likely that stock's gonna go up in the, sh in the short term. So for a trader, this is good. This works out, especially for those middle stocks. A lot of them are hitting 52 week highs right now or they're near it. So that's a good part. If you're on the investing side though, I would actually avoid a lot of those same names. I mean, you don't want that unnecessary volatility, unnecessary volatility. So avoid the middle names. Also watch out for any name that's connected to international trade, just in general. 
just in general, I'm just, I'm just saying anything connected to international trade, um, lots of goods shipping back and forth, um, the multiple countries, scary stuff. All right. Scary stuff. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, there's a lot of consumer staple names I could think of that kind of have that going on. I wouldn't mess with them. Wouldn't mess with them at all. Maybe focus more on the domestic names or focus more on, um, names that are international, maybe have some international exposure, but more services related or, or technology, always got to go with technology, right? So that's where you need to kind of go. Um, lastly, you need to be more sensitive about valuation and quality of companies. I've mentioned this before in my volatility video, and I'll put that in the card above, but look, valuation kind of matters now. All right. I know I made a video about kind of knocking value investing, but no, this it's needed right now. Okay. You do not want to pay too much for a company, especially if the quality of the company doesn't match up. So be more sensitive to valuation. Don't, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, I mean, you, it's not everything on contrary to most belief. It's not the best way to control risk, but it is a way, and it's a great way to protect yourself from the downside. And that's what I have for you all today. Look, man, politics always somehow, some way enters into the financial markets. Sometimes it's good, like the Trump rally, and sometimes it's bad, like what might be coming in the next couple of days, weeks, months to come. So you need to position yourself, be ready for any of those possibilities so you can continue to build wealth, not worry about things, and you'll be all good. Michael EJ here, helping you reach your financial goals and dreams by becoming the best investor you can be. And I'll see you in the next video.